Hello, this is Scott Pierce. Welcome to the Master Performance Method. This seminar will help you become much more effective at analyzing and, more importantly, writing effective answers to the California Performance Examination. As is the case in many other things in life, California is an innovative innovator in bar exam structure. The performance examination started out here and it has spread throughout the country. In another generation, performance examinations will probably be a feature on every bar exam in the country. And the performance examination is not a bad idea. Rather than test your ability to apply facts to academic knowledge in a vacuum, the performance examination gives you a chance to show some degree of human empathy as well as some strategic considerations and an ability to think on your feet. It's still an artificial exercise, and I'm not coming off, I hope, as a great admirer of any part of any bar examination. Still, the performance examination is still a relatively interesting exercise. The biggest problem that applicants have with the performance test is time management. It's very difficult to plow through all this stuff and then come up with something coherent under time constraints. Well, in some respects, I think our work together on the performance test will sharpen your mind and sharpen some talents that you're going to need to develop to be a good practitioner. At the same time, I think you'll see that the performance examination may be a somewhat less complicated or less intellectually difficult exercise than you may think it is. As is the case with the essays, our goal is to create a well-organized, thorough, and in the case of a performance examination in particular, a responsive answer to the question. You don't need to be a genius here, you just need to be mediocre. You've got to present a complete answer and you've got to do so under time constraints. This is not an easy exercise, but it is more of a logistical nightmare than an intellectual one. I think you'll find that often the organization skills that you are learning for the essays will transfer directly onto the performance examination. It's basically the same exercise. You want to be able to use either elements of prima facie cases for organization like duty breach causation damages or intentional homicide with malice or some other series of bottom lines that come out of the statute or some other law that you're given. Or you will want to fall back on an analytical approach to a subject, like for example in contracts, formation, defenses to formation, etc. A lot of the people who are in the business of coaching applicants on the performance test go, I think, overboard in talking about different categories of performance tests. I've heard as many of six or seven different types of performance tests discussed by various so-called experts. Let me give you the quick bottom line. Really, there are only two types of performance examinations, those that are objective and those that require advocacy or argumentative performance on the exam. Each type presents its own problems. And it is true that there are relatively predictable subcategories for each of the two big categories. But I don't want to dwell on that level of subtlety. It's not necessary. And I don't think it's helpful either. The point is to practice a whole lot of these, learn how to deconstruct them, and most importantly, learn how to construct a good answer. As I've said already once, Time management is the biggest problem for most repeat applicants to the California Bar Examination. I suggest that a general rule of thumb is to split up your work on the performance exam roughly in half. The first 50% for organization and analysis, the second 90 minutes for writing. Everybody is a little different, and I want to re-emphasize a point that I'm going to make several times in this seminar. There's no exactly r one right way to do this, and I will work individually with you as a tutorial student to try to custom fit an approach that works for you. Everybody's a little bit different,
And I think it's much easier to present a very straightforward approach to essay writing than a similarly straightforward approach to the performance exam. Still, I will take such a shot, and I will give you one very coherent, sensible approach that I think works for all performance examinations. Still, the mere fact that I think it's good doesn't necessarily mean that it will be that helpful for you. So keep in mind the caveat that goes along with everything that I'm going to tell you in these videos. We'll work together individually to try to focus your skills on the elements of the examination that you need to get a little better at. Still, generally speaking, for time management purposes, we'll split up our work 50% getting ready to write, 50% writing. Let me now suggest a very brief approach to writing all performance examinations. And this is directly out of the introductory materials that you have. I will suggest a seven-step approach to performance examinations. Like everything else I do, it is very linear, straightforward, direct, and I think you'll see fairly simple way of doing things. It is not especially subtle, but since presumably you've already worked through several subjects on the master essay method, you'll understand that what I'm trying to do is focus your attention on how to take everything they give you and most efficiently turn it around and present it back to them along with your own special and necessary input in order to convince a chain smoking solo practitioner that you have spotted the issues, understand the facts, and can demonstrate where the facts and the law touch and what that contact means. All right, all of the times that I'm going to present for each step are very approximate and I'm only doing so as a very rough guideline. Again, everybody's a little different and everybody will need a certain degree of fine-tuning. Step one, which I think is about five to ten minutes, read the instructions and the memo with great care and outline them if you can. And when I say read the instructions and the memo, I also mean to include in that any inter-office memos that talk about format. It is increasingly frequent on the California bar examination for uh, on performance tests a senior partner to give you a task memo and then an internal memo or two that talk about office procedures for doing the tasks that have been assigned. You've got to read them carefully and I say you ought to read all of that stuff up front. It ought to take from five to ten minutes depending on how many documents there are. Step two. Spend about fifteen or twenty minutes skimming everything they give you. Write in the order they give it to you, but don't do so blindly. First, take a careful look at the table of contents for the instructions and file. Read each line item of that table of contents carefully. Remember, back when we first started working together on essays, I emphasized to you over and over again, start off by reading the call of the question, take everything they give you out of the call of the question, try to find subtle hints about what issues might be tested based on your knowledge of the examination itself. Well, all of those skills apply here, too. And if you start to use them, I think you'll find that this process goes a little bit easier. And as I talk you through our six problems together, you will see that they give you a lot. And if you know what to look for, you can streamline the process quite a bit. All right, so step one, five to ten minutes, read the instructions and the memo and any related memos. And then step two, 15 or 20 more minutes, skim everything. Read the table of contents to the file and library, then skim through the documents. Try to identify what they are. Try to indicate whether or not they help you or hurt you. Now, a lot of people who teach performance examination skills turn their students into great paper doll manufacturers. Again, everybody's a little different, but my approach is to keep the paperwork to a minimum. I think that if you work on the two tables of contents and then have one or two pages for outlining each section of the performance test, that's probably all you need. 
as you go through the materials that we are presenting, I think that the least satisfying element of them are the model outlines to the answers. The trick is, how do you get to the outline as you work your way through the materials? I will try to guide you through that process as we review each one of them together, and we'll talk about it individually as well. Still, as you skim, the basic idea is, number one, try to get a feel for the lay of the land. What is at issue? Try to prioritize the documents. If you can figure out that one or two documents really are at the heart of the exercise, that's very helpful. You'll be able, after you get through the instructions and file, to take a look at the library. Again, read the table of contents with great care. For one thing, identify how many cases there are. If there are only one or two cases, it's more likely that you will need to focus on cases mentioned in footnotes within those cases. And let me emphasize again how non-academic a lot of this exercise really is. What you are trying to do is not the equivalent of academic scholarship. What you're trying to do is the intellectual equivalent of cut-and-paste journalism with a horrible deadline. So if there are a bunch of cases, you want to figure out which case is the most important and which one you're going to have to pull facts out of in order to compare it with your facts. And I realize that this is fairly sloppy work. You're skimming. It isn't as if you've got a chance to really get into the subtleties. But guess what? You probably won't have, have time to get that far into the subtleties, no matter how much time you spend reviewing it. Still, go through it once, quickly, 15 or 20 minutes. Then, step three. You've already read the instructions and memo, and any related memos, and you've skimmed the entire package in the order it's given to you. Next, spend about 30 or 40 minutes carefully reading the most important stuff. Annotate your outline at that point, and perhaps indicate via a sort of an index method on your outline and on the tables of contents what pages are important. Not because you're going to be quoting page numbers in your answer, but because you want to know where to turn quickly so that you can narrowly and specifically plug in the facts from the file and weave them into the appropriate slots that uh, are suggested by either the task memo or a related document or the law in the library. Realize this is very much the same basic exercise as the essays. We are taking legal principles. We're splitting them up into the smallest pieces that we sensibly can manage. Then we are taking the facts and with a degree of empathy and human understanding we are trying to plug them in to the element of the legal analysis that they belong to. All right, so you've read the instructions in the memo and related memos. Outline them if you can. You've skimmed everything quickly in order to spot the key documents and to annotate the tables of contents and outline a little bit. Then you've read the most important stuff carefully. Next, another 20 or 30 minutes, read everything else and to continue annotating your outline. Step five, after you've made a thorough pass through all of the stuff, review the memo and the instructions again. Make sure that you haven't gone off on a tangent. It's very easy on a performance examination to waste 15 or 20 minutes on a tangent that you end up not using. The heart of this exercise is time management. You've got to create your own jigsaw puzzle, and then you've got to put it together, and you've got three hours to do it. You'll see after a while that it is not an entirely unmanageable exercise, but it's going to take some practice. All right, you've got a few more minutes left until you've reached your 90-minute limit, theoretically, and realize all times are approximate here. Ultimately, you've got 90 minutes in to organize an outline, and I've suggested a way to do it. Then you've got 90 minutes to write and weave in all of the details. What this program is going to do is guide you through many different performance examinations. Others will be um, writing and available. In our library of questions and answers, there are plenty if you need them.
But I think you'll see, after you've worked your way through the core six that I will comment on, that you have a very clear understanding of what's necessary. Briefly, let me summarize what's ahead. We've got six questions that we're going to work on together. And we'll do it in a somewhat different format than the master essay method. Remember, in our essay course, what happens is I tell you an approach to a subject, then you outline or write a series of questions, and in between outlining and writing, I come on and comment in some detail. Here, it'll be somewhat different. For one thing, I am not going to read elaborate answers to you. You have our model answers to all of these questions, and you can study them at your leisure. And you can criticize them, too. I think it's very fair to say that there is a wider latitude of acceptable answers allowed by the State Bar of California on this section than on the essays. Reasonable people might differ with that assessment, but still, we can look at published answers that the Bar has printed, and we will see that often they differ from one another quite a bit. But what they have in common is they make a good net out of all of the law, and they find a home for most of the key facts. And that's the key to this exercise. And of course, all the answers that get published were answers that the applicant was able to complete on time.